Game day is finally here for the Arizona Coyotes. They'll be facing off the Columbus Blue Jackets in Columbus. We'll talk about all that game with our special friend from Locked On Blue Jackets. We'll be meeting him in just a sec. But all that coming up on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. You're Locked On Coyotes. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the show, everyone. Once again, this is Locked On Coyotes. I'm your host, Robin Leonardo. Carl Pavlik is off today. Uh, he has to deal with some other uh, other issues, but that's okay. I'm here, and don't worry, I won't be alone. We do have a uh, guest. We'll be introducing him in just a sec. But first, uh, I just want to go ahead and thank everyone for making Locked On Coyotes your first listen of the day. We really appreciate your support. We are free and available on all platforms now, including YouTube. For thanks to those who are tuning in via our YouTube channel. Also, I do want to thank everyone who's who uh, reached out to me earlier. I mean, obviously, there was no surprise. I posted on Twitter. I was in a little. Uh, minor automobile accident. I'm okay. As you can see, I'm here. I just need a little bit of rest. But uh, thanks everyone who, who put out that support. But anyways, Locked On Coyotes, Arizona playing their first game today. The first two games already, the first two days of NHL season already played. But now they finally get their first crack at it. The Arizona Coyotes and the Columbus Blue Jackets. So let's, with that further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our guest of today's show, Jay Forrester of Locked On Blue Jackets. How are you doing, Jay? I am. I am pretty good. Pretty good. I think I'm probably doing a little bit better than you, if only because I haven't been in any car crashes in the last little while. So, yeah, you know, but that that definitely makes a difference. You know, <laughs> all that, all that, uh, yep. tensing up of the body. Yeah, it it it's brutal. But it, it's oh, I believe it's that. good that you're feeling better. <laughs> you're you you're, you're feeling good. Yeah, it's funny. I've actually I've been in two car crashes in my entire life, and both of them happened when I was visiting friends in the states. So one of them was in Los Angeles, uh, which kind of makes sense because Los Angeles. And then the other one was in Columbus, Ohio. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's man. my my two car crashes have both happened while I was on vacation. Yeah, mine just here in lovely old Tucson, Arizona. Hey, at least it's at least it's still warm there. At uh... and not this I, morning, I, your listeners, your listeners won't know, but. Uh... I'm over in the UK, if you can't tell by my accent, and uh, it's winter here. Winter has arrived. Uh, it's going to be like this until April. So at least you still have, you know, some a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of warmth. It was in the 40s this morning, but you know. <laughs> oh, no. How terrible. <laughs> That's Arizona. We complain when it gets down to the 50s and 40s. <laughs> I love it, though. But uh, you know, I, I'm I'm excited for for uh, for the upcoming season. This is the first time that you and I are finally having. I mean, I I was on your show for, for once, I think, um, to talk about who who, who was oh, it? We we had a chat about uh, Rick Toshin. Oh, that's Toshin. right, that's right. Because um, um, he, he was interviewing. The, uh, yeah, yeah. And then obviously, I don't even know if he did get interviewed or not. But we'll. Uh... We'll talk about that in a minute because uh, both of us have got brand new coaches. Yeah, so, we like uh, both. Yeah, both of us do have brand new coaches. Um, the Arizona Coyotes this summer hired Andre Tourne uh, from the uh, Ontario Hockey League, and Brad Larson for the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, as he was an assistant coach. And I think before that he was a AHL head coach. So. Yeah, so he played for the Monsters, or I think they were yeah the Lake Erie Monsters as they were back then. Uh, that was his final season in, in hockey. And then when he retired, he took a job as an assistant coach with the Lake Erie Monsters, went on to be a head coach. And then I think in 2014, he took a jump to the NHL under Todd Richards, who uh, was ceremoniously fired a few games into the 2016 season and replaced with John Tortorella. And, you know, we all know how that went. Um and yeah, they basically, they had a, a bunch of candidates. I had some guys that I was really looking forward to maybe seeing more of. Um, I talked about this with Eric Ayala of Locked on Kraken. Like we might have gotten a white man from Europe just to really kind of bring that diversity in. But no, we uh, we ended up bringing in Brad Larson, uh, who is, 
I don't know. I've I've liked I've liked what I've seen from him so far. He seems to be saying all the right things. Obviously, it's tough to really make a judgment with him still being so brand new. They haven't really played a meaningful game yet, but I liked what I saw in preseason. He's done a bunch of, of uh, press conferences, and he seems like he's saying all the right things. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm excited. A bunch of Columbus fans are not. I think because they still blame him for how terrible our power play was for the past forever, and he was the guy that ran the power play. But uh, yeah, I'm. I'm excited. New coach. It's 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 weird. Like I'm I'm not sure how long uh your guy had been in the job before you got a new one, but like we had John Tortorella for five seasons, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a breath of fresh air to have Yeah, that. Rick Rick Tockett, I believe, when he came in, I I think he replaced uh Dave Tippett, who was fired in like twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen, I think one of those years. So when Rick Tockett came in, he Rick Tockett did like three, four years. Um so very pretty short term. But the new guy, Andre Tourne, uh, he has not been in the NHL. I mean, he had, he had like maybe an assistant in the NHL like 10, 15 years ago, whatever. But for the last few years, he has been head coach for the Ottawa 67s in the Ontario Hockey League. Like, I mean, that could be that could be a good thing though, I think, because a lot of my a lot of my issues with the NHL head coach situation is that they just kind of move the same guys around. Like, I don't know if you've seen that video of the four people with the water bottles and they just, like, pass all four water bottles around the table. But that's kind of what the head coach situation in the NHL feels like. So it is kind of cool that they're bringing in some some fresh blood. I wish it was a little bit more diverse, but the, the having a, a head coach who has not coached, who has not been a head coach in the NHL uh, before, allows, I think, for some new ideas, new systems, and it's not, you know, like... I was really disappointed with the hiring for Seattle for Dave Hagstall because yeah. I haven't really had a chance to do something fun and exciting there. And then in, in actual fact, they just kind of hired someone who was not good the last time he was a head coach. And they seem to have this, this impression that, oh, he was bad at that job, but maybe he'll be good doing exactly the same thing with slightly different personnel here. So like I'm, I'm pretty happy with with Brad Larson. I'm excited that Arizona's getting a new, a new person to try some, just to try something new. Like I don't understand why we keep doing the same thing and expecting different results with you know guys like, um, I've gone blank on every single head coach in the in the NHL. But, <laughs> you know what I mean though. Like oh yeah, I mean and that's you know I think you have to maybe maybe. In this case, you had to kind of have to be a team like the Arizona Coyotes or like, you know, a, a team that's a little bit lower on the totem pole, which is like, you know what, we've got nothing to lose. Let's go hire a new guy from fr- get some fresh blood and, you know, see what he can do. This guy's works with younger guys and the Coyotes are going to be a pretty young team for quite a long time. <laughs> so why not? Yeah, the Coyotes and the Blue Jackets, I feel like, are in basically identical positions at the minute um which is something we can kind of talk about when we get on to kind of the new guys because there's a ton of new guys on my team there's a ton of new guys on on your team um but yeah like why if the team's going to be bad why would you spend a ton of money on uh you know like Gerard Gallant who was kind of on my short list for for the Blue Jackets head coach position I think Gerard Gallant is actually a pretty good coach who has been fired uh a couple of times and for things that are not really his fault, I think. Um, I think he got fired in Vegas after they lost four games straight, mm-hmm. the, like not long after going to the Stanley Cup final in their inaugural season. So, like, I don't know, maybe the standards are too high in Vegas. But th- like, I don't understand. I don't. I understand why they don't want to pay a lot of money for a guy like Dragalon who can command a, a higher paycheck than a guy like Brad Larson, because you you cannot pay those two the same. And if you're gonna suck, you might as well. Pay, pay a coach less you know yeah and 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 that's why actually arizona was going for uh they're going for to do development people when they're interviewing they're looking at rocky thompson mike van ryan jerry Verde. all these people had ahl head coaching experience and they end up landing on a guy from the juniors which obviously it's i mean again it's i'll take it it's that's what you in it's it's a way to get a it, what the Coyotes are looking for, that clean slate, the fresh start. Yeah, exactly. And the 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 thing about like being a bad team is that you can only go up from here. You know, I expect yep. nothing. So I cannot be disappointed, you know? 
<laughs> yeah, but that, that that that's the I guess the good thing about this coy- upcoming coyote season is yeah, I I've like Carl and I have been kind of you know ru- like you know running home every every point saying this coyote team is going to be bad. We're making sure your expectations are that this team's going to be bad. So anything that they do, you'll actually be happy about. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's just gravy, you know? Like that was the thing about the Blue Jackets uh, a couple of seasons ago when they made the playoffs and then they had to face Tampa. And at this point I was like, oh God, this is the opposite of what I wanted. Uh, they won the first game and I was like, cool, I'm done. We can like everyone with the, you know, our oh, Tampa in three jokes and then obviously we turned around and swept them but like every game i was like you know what this is just bonus you know it was we're playing with house money essentially and that's the kind of the fun part of being a a rebuilding or a a not very good team is that sometimes you go on a run and it's it's just like bonus fun you know hey i'll tell you this we had some fun talking about uh, the Arizona Coyotes only losing one game in the preseason. So, yeah, exactly. It's like the, this is you've got to get the joy kind of where you can for for teams like this, you know. And I've had similar conversations with uh, Noli Mianchi of of Lock John Red Wings. You know, it's the team's gonna suck, so you might as well enjoy like the the little things. Like I don't know, um, you guys just got a brand new defensive prospect, right? Uh, Connor Timmins. Yes. Uh, that, who I'm sure yeah. we're going to talk about in, in just a minute. But like the, the fun is going to be, oh, hey, maybe he's going to be really good this season. Maybe he's going to be such a bright spot in this average-ish Coyotes lineup is is the part of the kind of way I can, I can put that's, it. Um, that's giving them more of an... <laughs> that's giving a little bit more on that. It's not a good lineup. I mean, their defense is good, but... No, we'll we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, let's actually start get get ready to talk about that. Um, I know you have a couple think a couple house cleaning items to do. So first, let's go ahead and um, talk about our friends at Bet Online. You know, saying we're back in Bet Evan with all eyes back on the gridiron as teams back to start another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website, use your mobile device, sign up for a free account today, receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use our promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, including hockey, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. But online, where the game starts. All right, uh, let's talk about a little bit more. Let's talk about kind of like how these rosters are shaping up because we're both of our teams again. Like, not only do we have new coaches, but there's a, some turnover in, our, in both of our rosters. Yeah, that's uh, that is a that's that's one way you could put it. Um, <laughs> we looked, um, I looked at this a while ago on on my podcast actually on on Locked On Blue Jackets, and I think that of the guys on last year's opening night roster, so of the twenty guys that opened against Nashville for for last season, I believe eight of them are still on the team. Oh wow! Like that's that's the kind of turnover that we had. So we lost. So many people. Obviously, you know, Pierre Luc Dubois went. Um, we lost David Savard. We lost Nick Felino. We lost Cam Atkinson. We lost Seth Jones. Um, it was really funny, actually. They obviously the the uh, Nationwide Arena in Columbus at the two entrances. They have these like huge posters uh, with the guys' faces on. And obviously, when guys get traded, they've got to take them down. And I think they, like, once the season was over, they were like, right, well, we're just going to take all of these down and start again because there was no one left. <laughs> like, everyone that had been, like, up on these big posters wasn't on the team anymore. So they were like, okay, cool. We'll just take everything down. Um, Jeff Saboda, Jackets Insider, um, friend of the show, etc., um, posted some some pictures of the inside of the arena and whatnot, and it was it just looked empty because they had to take all of the banners down because all of the banners had you know Nick Foligno or Cam Atkinson or core guys that we were like these guys are going to retire in Columbus right like 
Nick Foligno's said like Nick Foligno's number is going to be up in the rafters by the end of this, and then obviously this season happened, and now we have uh, children. They're all children. Like I looked it up, I think three of the Blue Jackets are older than I am. Um, oh man. Like it, it, and I was born in 1992 for reference. Uh, so I think we literally just have there are three, three adults and a bunch of like 22 year olds or younger. Yeah, that's that, that's the, and that's the crazy thing is because like like yeah, both both the Coyotes and and the uh, Blue Jackets are on on in similar paths. Because I was gonna say the same thing because I was actually counting the same thing for the Coyotes. How many roster? How many players from the roster last year are there? We're proud, we're probably in there with seven or eight people from like and did it, I mean the same thing goes with like you like when you talked about the banners, it reminded me like, oh yeah, they showed a preseason, like like during the preseason, a picture of a pillar at Gila River Arena, and it has all of Rec Ben Larson, and you're just like, that shouldn't be here. <laughs> that got missed in the <laughs> in the sweep. Um, same goes with uh, one that had Connor Garland and everything like this. He's like, Oh, of course, because that because you think, oh, these guys are these guys are the face of the coyotes. And, oh, I, I, I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it, yeah, it kind of, it's weird. I think it helped me a little bit thinking about how it was kind of just a total like wash. It feels a little bit better to know that basically everyone is new as opposed to like a couple of seasons ago when we, st- we, uh, Sergei Bobrovsky walked in free agency, Artemi Panarin walked in free agency like that sucked more because uh, it was basically the same team minus a couple of guys but a couple of key guys and now i'm like well this is just a whole new team to learn so it's i don't know it, it feels better it feels like it's a brand new team as opposed to this is last season's team but with slightly less guys if that makes sense <laughs> yeah that i i totally get that and and that's that you know that's part of what i was feeling with this coyotes team too is i was like talking about i was, I was talking about this with so many guests who i had on over the summer and i was like um at this at this point this was before they traded oel and Connor garland and i'm like i and i'm even telling them like don't be surprised if these two get traded this off season um and people were going going crazy. It's like it's like are you are you, are you seriously think they're going to rebuild and completely blow up like that and i'm like yeah <laughs> They kind of had, I feel like they don't have a choice at this point. Um, and yeah, and then the, yeah, and again, Garland gone, Kemper gone, El- Ekman Larson gone, uh, Galagoski gone, Jamerson gone. Oh, I like, forgot that you guys had Nicholas Jamerson. I, I love him. Um, or I loved him, I guess. He's not dead. He's just retired. But he was... <laughs> I don't know. He was low key one of the best defensemen in this league. Oh yeah, uh, when I had Craig, when I had Craig, yeah, when I had Craig Morgan on, um, he went ahead and said like, like he, I mean, he uh, Craig Morgan grew up a Blackhawks fan, so give you reference on that. He so he grew up watching like he so he he watched a lot of uh, Nicholas Jamerson out, out in those years that he, that he was there, and he's like, this is a defenseman that like he doesn't care if he'll get injured, he will get his body in front of those pucks and. Stuff. Like that's the tr- that's the old time defenseman that you don't see anymore. I think one of I like I I hate this whole playing injured warrior thing that that they push. But I think a lot about this must have been like way back in twenty fourteen maybe. Um, Nicholas Jamison got hit in the throat with a puck, and then they were like, okay, well you should probably take two weeks off of like talking and. Like, <laughs> exertion and stuff and he was like no 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 and he put like he just put like a, a, a throat guard on and then you could hear him like yelling on the ice like the dude did not care and he would throw any part of himself in front of in front of the puck um he was he was great i i miss getting to watch him play yep and again now that he's retired we'll well we won't we won't be able to see any more of that but it's okay because then there are still some good defensemen out there um because new guys that's good that's, that's the point we we're getting at and Coyotes have a lot of them. Uh, Connor Timmins, Vladislav Provenev, uh, Shane Gossespierre is now on our team, um, it, as well as the three people from Vancouver that could potentially make a $12 million fourth line in Louis Erickson and Tom Roussel and Jay Beagle. Uh, so, and this Andrew Ladd, like this is a, like 
a team like Cincinnati taking the Kyrie took a t- bunch of terrible contracts, but what did they get out of it? Draft picks, draft Second picks, round. draft picks, draft picks. <laughs> Don't they have like eight for eight picks in the first two rounds of the draft? Like yes, they have year, three first round draft picks and five second round draft picks. Like I so Columbus had three first round draft picks um this this past season and that was like it got to that point and I was like okay I'm done learning about prospects now I can't learn about any more like we had I think we had nine new players by the end of the draft of like just guys that we drafted and I was like okay I can only pay attention to the first four of these guys everyone else is dead to me until they make the team because right. it's just too many too many new kids you know what's funny is um, when the Coyotes traded for that ninth overall and I had to scramble to find out who they were going to potentially pick because, <laughs> you know, everyone else, you guys all had a mock draft. Right. You I'm were like, like, oh, I don't oh, need to learn about the draft. Know, I, I don't need to worry about this. And I was like, oh, I got to put in like, t- like everyone else put in like two weeks worth of research, all of that in two hours. <laughs> um, and um, and what it came down to is I came down to the potential of the Coyotes drafting two players. Dylan Gunther wasn't on that list because I thought he was higher up on the list. My The two that I thought they were going to pick right, were going to be Ken Johnson and Nicole Sillinger. Both of them went to you. <laughs> hey, yeah, I kind of had a similar... So I'd done my research in terms of our fifth overall pick, obviously. So I looked at a bunch of guys that were probably going to go top 10 um, or at least top five and then i looked at a bunch of guys that were probably going to be later on because as far as i knew right up until the day of the draft we had first we had 25th then we had 32nd um in the first round and i was like okay cool so i'll pay attention i'll pay do a bunch of work on like the top five guys because those are you know the most likely guys to to go and then it gets a little bit like shaky at the end um but i did some research on guys that were supposed to go later in the draft and then we traded seth jones and i was like okay cool and then they were like we got a first overall back for him Oh, not a first overall, sorry. Uh, we got two first round picks, one of them in this year. And I was like, oh, okay. Whereabouts is that going to be? And then it turned out to be 12th overall, which turns out was this exact sweet spot of the guys who I'd done no research for. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm just going to just gonna hope hope for the best. And it turns out that they ha- they actually, they picked up Carl Sillinger, which who was a guy that I had, um, I was aware of at least. Um, it wasn't like, the season before where the Blue Jackets drafted Igor Chinikov and literally every single hockey pundit person reporter was like, who? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Um, those are a lot of, th- those are a lot of the fun things. Um, Coyotes fans know a lot of the pain of uh, some of their draft picks that they made. I mean, some were well-known draft picks that they made in the first round. Um, at least the, the two most well-known in the last few years and Jacob Chikrin and Dylan Strom. Dylan Strom, unfortunately is one that's not having a great time. <laughs> no, he actually, there's rumblings that he's going to go to um, Columbus because we need centers desperately. Um, so it's, it's uh, just, you and me both. I've always you... been a shame that Strom didn't work out because I thought, he, you know, he lit up juniors and then for whatever reason, and he did pretty well in the AHL as well. Yeah, I watched I watched him his first year in Tucson and his second year in Tucson. I'm like, I like this guy. He's going to be good. And then it just didn't translate to, I don't know whether it was a systems issue. Um, and then obviously he got traded to Chicago and had a really good, like the the 25 or so games that he played to finish yeah. out the season there. And then he just kind of, I don't know, never, never quite came together, which is a shame because, because I do like him. But yeah, Jacob, Jacob Chikrin is a problem. <laughs> For, for teams who are playing the Coyotes. He is going to be a future Norris Nor, Norris Trophy candidate. Um, and he's only 23. Yeah, it feels he, like he's been in, the, been in the league forever. Yeah. And like, I, when I, I, it's funny though, when I say only 23, only 22, I'm like, I say that as if he's like, as if, to me, that's they're a kid. Yet um, to me, I'm like, oh, wait, they're only, he's only a year <laughs> younger than me. <laughs> Uh, see, uh, yeah, I'm kind of hitting that. Uh, I'm kind of hitting that age. I'm not that old, but I'm hitting that age where like hockey players start to decline, and so it's like you talk about guys being like thirty, thirty-one, and they're like they should be put out to pasture, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, like oh. I'm twenty-nine, and I'm like, am I old? No, I'm not. Like by basically any standards, I'm not old, but. Um, yeah. In hockey, he's basically ancient. Like, especially as a goalie. Like, I know people were talking about Marc Andre Fleury, who turns thirty-seven next month. Basically dead in yep. <laughs> in goalie terms, yep. you know. So, 
But, but uh, uh, what about for you guys? Like, what are some of the, the newer guys that you guys picked up? Uh, so we picked up Adam Boquist, obviously, from uh, Chicago in the Seth Jones trade. Uh, he's looked really good. Um, we have uh, Jake Bean as well, uh, because we had like two defensemen at the end of last season because everyone else left. Um, so we picked up Jake Bean. He's very, I think he's, I don't even know if he's 21 yet. Um, he's a former first round draft pick. Uh, uh, Boquist, former first round draft pick I think he went 7th overall a few years back um, God, we have so many new guys Cole Sillinger made the made the opening night roster Oh, good for um, him Which is exciting um, Mason McTavish was the other 18-year-old that made the roster for the Ducks He scored uh, last night So there's there's some pressure on Cole Sillinger now to, uh, to step it up and, and score in his debut But uh, Gregory Hoffman, who... People might know from the most recent World Championships, he led the t- he led the tournament in scoring, uh, tied with, of course, uh, Team GB's very own pride of pride of Sheffield, uh, Liam Kirk, who will be starting the year in Tucson. But I, I'm ready to I'm just ready to go all in on the Coyotes if they if they call Liam Kirk up. Um, you know, I'm still I, I, I'm still waiting from the. Uh my connects in the roadrunners to give me a kachina jersey of kirk's name on the back i would lose my mind that's that's what i want like that's my jersey holy it's, grail especially minute. because the roadrunners kachina jerseys are the best in the american hockey league there's that's like too, no question much. about it <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah we I, like i could go on and on we basically the entire team is is new uh boone jenner's returning zach Warinsky's returning um who else do we have that's new? Uh, Igor Chinukov might make the opening night roster. He's kind of on the fourth line at the minute, so he'll either sit there or he might go down to the AHL. Um, he's like one of those extras. Sorry? He's like one of those extras. Yeah, he's kind of a bubble guy at the minute. Uh, Max Domi has returned from shoulder surgery like two months earlier than everyone thought he would. Um, I forgot you guys You guys have Max Domi. Like he, so so <laughs> did I. For like the entire off season, because like the thing about that, I have zero object permanence with with hockey players. So if they're not on my team, like I I watched the Blackhawks game last night and was like, oh hey, Seth Jones still exists. Um, if like as soon as they're not on the team, I forget about them. Um, but oh, I I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> so it uh, yeah, it should be it should be interesting. I would not be surprised if uh, tonight's game is high scoring, um, and we'll. We'll get into that in in just a minute, I guess. But uh, first, we should probably talk about rockauto.com. Uh, I don't want to upset you by talking about uh, car repairs, but uh, <sighs> with the with the ever-increasing number of makes and models of cars, it's basically impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why would you endure pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning? You have to wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer. They choose the brand that their warehouse happens to carry. You just take your car in, leave it there, wait for the part to come in, pay for the labor. It's just, it's a whole ordeal. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket, so you don't even have to leave the house. You can save time and money when using rockauto.com. They are a family business. They've been serving customers online for over 20 years, and prices are reliably low, no matter if you are a DIYer or if you are a professional. They've got everything you could need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, uh, even things like new carpet. If you could put it on or in your car or truck, rockauto.com probably sells it. So go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com, see all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure you write locked on in there. How did you hear about this box? So they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. So oh. yeah, like I like I said just a minute ago, I feel like it could be okay. So the game is gonna go one of two ways. I think it's either gonna be a six five overtime game or it's gonna be like a two one nightmare. Those are <laughs> Those are the options for for tonight's game. I think. I mean, I'm not sure how much trust I have in the Kaiser's goaltending yet because I don't know what Hutton is capable of. I don't even know if he's even played a game in a long time. And Karel Vemelka is a on a entry level contract, 
That, oh, that's so you have a baby goalie so, and then an ancient goalie. I said again, ancient Hutton's what like 35, <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so but I actually I watched um, I watched Hutton play in a preseason game for the Coyotes. Actually, I was watching the, the baby Kings play because I cover the Ontario Reign for uh, Phil Pass Hockey, and so I was like, Oh, I'll watch some of the Kings prospects. Uh, because again, like I don't sleep when normal people do. Um, uh, and he looked he looked good. I think they ended up winning that game three one. So uh, Hutton could be could be a surprise. Um, I mean, he played. He was in Buffalo last year, I think. And so, like Arizona's got to be a step up from Buffalo at least. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> did... <laughs> a slight incline, maybe. Maybe a sidestep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, so it could it could be interesting. Um, because I feel like we probably have the edge in goaltending. Uh, we have Elvis, Elvis Muslikens starting, um, and he has just kind of, he's come on immensely from his first season where he really struggled. Um, but also the Blue Jackets don't know how to score goals. So uh, it's either going to be a really boring, low scoring affair where nothing happens or both of the goalies are just going to get shelled because well, all of our defense is children. So, yeah, I mean, I think it, yeah, it really depends on where the certain thing shines. Like, you know, the, the Coyotes defense is like their brightest point on this team. I mean, it's led by a pretty decent prospect, like Connor Timmons and Jacob Chikrin and Shane Gossespear and Ailey Lewishkin, who, if they pair up, I call the bear pair. See, I have been, I have seen this, and I have been questioning this because why is he why is he the bear? Because I know that bear in Russian is uh, Medved, so <laughs> I have been curious about why he is the bear. I don't know why Lubishkin is called the bear. All I know is that his nickname is the Russian bear. That's what they call uh, well, him. Well, I I kind bear. of love that actually. I love weird nicknames that like only make sense to the team, and no one really wants to talk about why, but. <laughs> I mean, even the better the better part is if in the potential of a bear pair in Gossa Spear and Lubushkin put together. But our coach's uh, uh, Andre Torne, his nickname is also Bear. Just a whole team of bears, I think. You should acquire um, Ethan Bear from Carolina. <laughs> collect all of them, all of the bears in the in the NHL. Yeah, that's that's why uh, I named my fantasy team. Um, I, I have a fantasy league with Scott Cullen. My name, the name of my fantasy team is Bargain Bills Bears. Incredible, love it. That's again, that's the best part of fantasy for me is the is the name, and then I get bored halfway through the drafting process, draft all my favorites, and then forget about them for the season, and then check in like two weeks before the season finishes to see where I am. And usually, I'm about sixth out of tenth, which, which is, is not good. bad. <laughs> yeah, if you forget but, about you know, it, considering I don't like I ignore my team, I think it's it could be it could definitely be worse. Um, but yeah, the the defense I think is really a weak point for Columbus this season which is weird because we're used to having it the other way um they took the addition of uh jacob varchek who i didn't even mention in the hey we have a bunch of new guys segment right. um he's back in columbus which is super exciting um if we can get him in line a to click and they kind of already have if we can get him to fix the power play which again he kind of is working on it um he has been a real bright spot in in preseason um jacob varchek so it uh yeah i'm not sure whether sorry i'm not sure whether uh it's gonna go well i think it's gonna be a fun experiment but i foresee a lot of high scoring games in in columbus's future for better or worse yeah i'm interested to see how it works for the uh for the coyotes too on this side i'm actually right now looking on the bet online uh lines page for this game for tonight and the uh, Arizona Coyotes are underdogs, so the, the so the Columbus Blue Jackets favored by a goal and a half, with the total score to five and a half points. Which is any time the Coyotes are involved, that's always. The yeah, spread. I think I would t- I would take the over on uh, on that. I should uh, I will consult my own betting thing, which, uh, the name of which I will not mention because it's not a bet online because it's not available over here, but. Uh... Yeah, Columbus is Columbus is the favorite favorite for us as well. Um, so we'll see. Maybe maybe I'll put a little a little money on it. Um, 
we should we should finish up um i've decided i want to this season start doing i did some like bold predictions last season um okay for the the like the outcome of games so i want you to predict the final score and i want you to predict the uh game winning goal scorer ooh i like this so you know i I think the Coyotes are gonna get, get first. Like they're gonna get a uh, you know the momentum from preseason. I think they'll, they'll. I think they'll at least start off with a win. Uh, the final score of this one being, I'll say, four to three. Make it four to three. A pretty close one with the game-winning goal given to Lawson Kraus. Mm, that's that is that is a solid. A solid prediction. I am also going to say 4-3, I think. Um, but I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to have faith in Columbus to win their home opener, which they haven't done in a million years. But, <laughs> you know, if if I keep predicting it, eventually it will come true, <laughs> is my logic. Speak it into existence, right? <laughs> so, um, and I am going to say the game-winning goal is going to go to... Uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand, I think, who's my pick to lead the team in scoring this season. Um, however, like sometimes wacky things happen. Like I don't know if you paid attention to the Colorado Chicago game that that aired last night, where the scoring was opened up by uh, Columbus legend Jack Johnson. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, it, it could be it could be anyone, but that's yeah. that's my pick is is Bjorkstrand. Scoring in the five, the four three. Uh, it's probably going to go to overtime because Columbus loves to go to overtime in every game they possibly can. So, I mean, so did the Coyotes last year. We called them the Cardiac Coyotes for a reason. <laughs> Incredible. But I think that uh, I mean, yeah, we've got we've got our scores, we've got our predictions. That kind of wraps things up for this show. Um, I appreciate everyone for listening to this show. Jay, why don't you go t- tell people where we can find you and and, and your podcast? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter uh, at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. I believe it is on the screen down here. Um, If you have trouble spelling it, because I spell it in a weird way, um, I yell a lot about the Blue Jackets over there. Uh, I occasionally post dog pictures, so if that's something that you're interested in. Um, And I also have a lot of opinions about Star Wars. So if that's something you're interested in, give me a follow over there. If you would like to care about the Blue Jackets, which, I mean, like, you can, I guess. Um, I didn't choose this life. I was <laughs> this life happened to me. But <laughs> if you would like to listen to uh, Lockdown Blue Jackets, you can find us over at L O underscore Blue Jackets, and uh, you can find us literally wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we're on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Odyssey, Podbean. Uh, wherever you listen to Lockdown Coyotes, you will indeed find Lockdown Blue Jackets. It's the only exception being YouTube, which is where yeah. now you can find the Locked On Coyotes podcast as well. Um, which, which, uh, if you're watching to this once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment and like. Uh, interact with us. We love answering questions. We can answer them on a future episode of the podcast. Um, but uh, you can also find Locked On Coyotes on social media at l o underscore Coyotes. Um, and uh, you, you'll know because you see the, the wonderful purple logo that you see on the top of the screen if you're watching on YouTube um, because, you know, Kachina is the best. And uh, I'm personally at Ralph Yano one And uh, again, you can interact with me. Um, I not only talk about the Coyotes, but Bay Area sports because that's where I'm from. You know, so no surprise. Oh, um, we should, yeah, we could finish off with uh, Go Giants. Yes, go Giants. Uh, beat the Dodgers. <laughs> back, to play back my bandwagon and I'm sticking to it. No one tell Jason. Beat <laughs> LA. I love it. Um, anyways, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And to the Kaidus fans listening, don't forget to howl on.